Welcome and 07 to section 3 of the API C++ tutorial on how to connect an API with an HTTP request in Unreal Engine. If you haven't seen the first or second part of this tutorial series, you will find the links on screen or you can find them in the description. In the first section we set up the widget and in the second section we set up the HTTP request and talked about the API we're using in this tutorial. In this section we will make sure that we are requesting the correct data and we will also retrieve the data from the response. Before we move on, please take a second to like and subscribe. It helps the channel to beat the algorithm. Thank you for your support. Now let's get into the video. Alright, first of all let's start working on getting the URL set up in the correct way. In the H file here at the top I would like to add an enum of cities. So whenever we push the button it will store the current city in the URL request. Let's start with creating the enum. U enum, and this will be a blueprint type. Enum class, let's call it E for enum and city. It will be a U int 8. The first name is EC for enum city underscore Tokyo. We can add the U meta display name equals Tokyo. Then we can copy and paste this three times. We're going to change this to London and London as display name. New York and the same for display name. And then I also want to include the default at the end. Okay, cool. So let's go into the private section and add a variable for this. So I'm going to add the eCity called city and I also want to add a new variable for the URL so f string and let's call it city URL. Next I want to store the time that we're going to get so we're going to get it into an f date time variable called time. I want this to be a u property visible anywhere blueprint read only and the category of time. And as this is in the private section, we need to add a meta allow private access equals true. And now we need to have a function to switch the URL depending on what city we selected. So in the protected section here, let's add a function for it. And it will be a void function. And we're going to call it switch on city. And let's create that body as well. Okay, let's go into the CPP file. Here in the constructor, let's add an initialization list. If you haven't done that before, it's a colon followed by a comma separated list where the values are stored in parentheses. So the first item I want here is city. And within the parentheses, we'll add eCity and then colon colon ec underscore Tokyo. In the switch on city, we can now store something inside the city URL variable. So let's add the city URL equals to f string. Let's add the quotation marks and then we'll do the full URL address that we copy down from the website. I'm going to remove everything after the equal sign because we're going to create a switch statement here that will handle the request parameters. So let's do our switch here and we are going to switch on city. I'm going to remove the default city in the end here. Under the case of Tokyo, we can add city URL dot append. And here we put in Asia forward slash Tokyo. And this is what we saw on the website. For London, we copy and paste this and change it into Europe and London. And the same for New York. We'll change it into America and New York with an underscore. So whenever we call this function with a new city, the city URL will be updated. So let's add this switch on city function at the top on our send function. And we're going to set the set URL to city URL. So what we're doing here is that we are running our switch on city that will update the URL and then we place that URL into our send function here. And the next thing we want to do is we want to call our send function. We're going to call it in the begin play. 
and this will get a starting value whenever we start a game. Otherwise, it would be blank until we press a button. This might be what you want, but right here we're going to call it first and begin play. Okay, now what do we want to do with the response we get from the request? In the on get time response, we put a comment here. This was to mark out where we're going to put the code to handle the response. Let's just take a look at the response JSON. This is where we get for a token request. There's a lot of information here, but what I want is a date time, as this is all the information I need in one section. I could get an hour, minute and second, but then I have to build it up myself and in the daytime everything is there and all I have to do is grab it and pass it through a few already built functions from the Kismet Math Library. So at the top let's include the Kismet Math Library. And yes to find the include you can also go out online and look at the docs but I rather just do it in house. So if we go to the solution explorer and type out kismetmathlibrary.h we get the structure that we need and this works out for basically everything you want to include here. So we don't need a class, so we just add include kismet, and then we're going to add kismetmathlibrary.h. All right, let's go back to the on get time response here. So we can now work with the library and we can add the u kismet library colon colon. And in here we have a function called date time from isostring. And the date time we have in a response code is an isostring, so it's perfect. So let's add a JSON object, and it needs to have the dereferencing of the pointer and the arrow notation followed by get string field. And the string we want is the date time, as it is written in the JSON. And where do we want to store it? Well, it is in the our time variable that we created. All right, that is that. Let's now save and compile and let's see if we get the correct time in the game mode. Back here in the editor, we can press the play. And if we check now in the outliner and look for our game mode and in the details panel, we can now see the current time of Tokyo. Perfect. So we have successfully sent an HTTP request in an API. We got the response back from the API and we parsed out the data from the JSON that we needed. We stored in a variable that we now can see in our editor. Pretty cool stuff and it's all in C++. All right, it's time to move to section four where we will start working on the data and create some cool functions to update the game screen. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something new. I would love if you push that like and subscribe button as it would help out the channel. Until next time, on Swatpop Gaming, have a great day.